In this tutorial, we will create some text in Maya. If you just want something quick, then you can stop watching after the first two minutes. If you want this to go into a game or production pipeline, then stick around for the whole thing. First, you're gonna to wanna to save your work as text can get a bit crashy and go to create, type, you'll see it appears directly in your scene like this. You can zoom out a bit and your attribute editor should appear on the right hand side. If it doesn't, click on the vertical text that says attribute editor. If you can't see that, click on this button up here and go to the tab that says type one. You'll see a tab called type one and you can immediately change your text for a real time update if you're using Maya 2019. In older versions of Maya, this will be slightly less intuitive, but most of the same options will be there. So to change your text, make sure the text tab and you can change what it says. You can also immediately change the font. It even works with downloaded fonts as well, like this one here, True Lies. You can change the spacing in between the letters. You would definitely need to do this for your downloaded fonts. If you go over to in the text, tab there's a section that says kerning scale you can increase that as needed to space things out to make it easier to read for example you could use a font like beyond for neon signs or even arabesh for a uh, star wars street or something like that if you're watching this as part of my iphone 11 tutorial you, you can just use a font called myriad pro and type in iphone with a capital p and then follow the rest of this tutorial with this. I've linked to the font in the description below. So now before you can say that you're done, you just need to go to the geometry tab over here and sort out the bevels and also these are necessary divisions on the way down. This is the first step that can crash your computer, so be warned. If you drag the slider for extrude divisions, it can crash for some reason. But if you type in the number one for extrude divisions, it doesn't crash. And now you can go to the enable bevel section. I would hit enable bevel. It's by default using outer bevel, which is best if you're a beginner because it causes less problems, but it makes the text look a bit thicker, which would be bad for a brand identity like this. But an inner bevel, whilst keeping the weight of the characters as intended, does create some problems on the corners of your letters after you've beveled it like this where they sort of overlap and it doesn't look very nice. So an outer bevel stops this from happening. So I've gone back to outer bevel and you can increase and decrease the bevel size over here. I usually have these two numbers this is the same so let's do 0.2 and 0.2 and I usually reduce the bevel divisions because six is a bit over the top so I usually reduce it down to about three. I'm just going to assign my chrome material. If you want a tutorial on how to make things look shiny in your viewport check the link in the description below. If you're going to use this text as part of a printed poster or a simple motion graphic animation you can probably stop watching here but if you intend on using this as part of a production pipeline for a film or a game or you intend on selling geometry with this in it then you'll definitely need to keep watching so that we can clean up the geometry so be warned at the moment if you try to smooth this by hitting three on the keyboard or going to mesh smooth this will happen it will completely mess up and it could never really work in a game engine or be subdivided if it needs to be high detail in a film so we need to come along and fix all this i'm gonna hit one on the keyboard just to come back to normal mode or undo if you've just smoothed it so the problem is that geometry needs to really be made of faces with four sides just like these ones here as soon as a game engine or even maya for certain situations encounters a face with more than four sides like the front of this letter e it really messes up for example this letter e if i was to ask maya how many faces it has by holding Control right click and going to edge parameter you can see it's got 91 edges and this is why it completely screws up when you try to smooth it we need to reduce this down into lots of four-sided faces or triangles in some way even if your letters don't go crazy when you smooth them the tops or ends of the letters will sort of smooth out like this and it'll end up looking like comic sans font or like a balloon so we're going to need to fix that so that i don't break the brand identity for example of this i need to go back to inner bevel so the font retains its original intended weight which then creates these problems here so I'm intentionally trying to create as many problems as I can so that you guys can see it so to get rid of these nasty overlapping beveled corners the easiest thing to do is to simply re remove some of these edge loops so what's happening here if I go to my bevel offset you can see the moment that the bevel starts to overlap through a neighboring edge then it starts to fold in on itself like this which is the whole problem so if I set this back to 0 0.2 which is just about right I can go in here go to edge mode and Double click on this edge loop here and do shift, right click, delete edge. Double click on this edge loop, shift, right click, delete edge. And then it's a lot better. 
If I go to face mode to test if these edges are connected, you can click on a face, shift, double click next door, and indeed the whole loop is selected. Maya has recognized that we've deleted those edge loops and the bevel has corrected itself accordingly. Down here, it's very, very barely noticeable, but I can see that this edge loop is indeed going inside the beveled corner here and it's creating an overlap. So I'm gonna double click on this edge loop and hit delete. The disadvantage of deleting these edge loops is that when you shift right click delete edge, Notice that we lose a tiny bit of curvature on the E, but I really don't think anyone's going to notice. You could bring some of these neighboring edge loops up and fix it, but no one's going to notice. Now we need to add our own bevels to these sharp corners here to create equally nice highlights like we have along here, but along the tops of our letters. If I was to hit three now, you can see how blobby some of these letters are. So this is a step that crashes Maya without fail unless you both delete history and this ridiculous 90 sided face which shows you how unstable faces with more than four sides really can be imagine if this was going to a game engine how many ways the game could crash and how difficult it might be to pinpoint the cause of the crash which could easily lead you to losing your job or something you certainly won't have your contract renewed so delete history it should really be on your shelf it, if it isn't do edit delete all by type history you can do Control shift to add that to your shelf and after you deleted history you can click on the face of your letters and hit delete now you probably only need to delete the faces if they are on letters that have enclosed loops like the top of this e if it's for the n it probably won't crash as often but i think it's the enclosed loop here that's causing the problem so i'm going to hit delete on that one and we'll come back to that later i'm also going to delete the back face just for good measure now i'm going to select all of these sharp edges pretty much any 90 degree edge i'm going to do shift and i'm double clicking on all of these sharp 90 degree corner edges here on this letter e i won't do the whole word i'm just going to focus on the letter e for this video to save time it's the most difficult sort of letter so everything i do here you should encounter on all of your own as well so i've selected all the sharp vertical edges None of these sort of soft ones that are make up the curves or anything like that. Just the really harsh edges there. They're the ones that need to be beveled. So this is the point at which it could crash as well. You could, It should be on your shelf, but if it isn't, you can go to Edit Mesh Bevel. And if this Poly Bevel 1 window doesn't come up, this little one here, you just need to, instead of using the bevel tool from your shelf, bring it, use it straight from up here. And then you can go to the fraction and increase the fraction all the way as big as it can go, really. I'm gonna drag that all the way to one. Now, even though I've dragged it to the max, it's still got very, very small bevels that have been created here. This is because the bevel over here has found that it can't make itself any larger than this edge. So if I increase the fraction up, it eventually gets stuck on that edge there and it doesn't want to go beyond that. Now you could increase the value to more than one. I could, if I want, type in the number three and it will indeed go through itself like that. But if ever you see your bevels being too small, it's because there's a neighboring edge somewhere which is too close to the corner to enable it to work properly. So you can find that. In my case, I'm gonna leave the value overdriven to three. I can then go to my vertex, click on the vertex down here that's overlapping, do W for move, and using this square plane here, or the arrows, I'm just gonna kind of move this up into a happier sort of place like that. I know that's much better. If you've just lost your bevel window like I have, you can go to your attribute editor and in poly bevel one tab, you can increase the segments up there. Um, increase my segments to three, which might be overkill, but it'll be fine. Now we can start to fill the faces of our letters back in if you had to delete them. So you should only really have to delete them if it was a continuous face um, or if you really didn't want it to crash. So I'm gonna show you now why it might have been crashing earlier and the limitations of the fill hold tool. So if I go to select my edges that I'd like to be filled up, so I'm gonna double click on this edge here, shift, double click on this edge here and go to mesh fill hole. You can see it fills not only the gaps between the edges nicely here, at the top here, it's filled the center part of the hole completely as well. If I was to do this, the same command on this letter N over here and double click on that and do mesh full hole, it'll work fine because there isn't an enclosed loop like there is on the top of the E. So the easiest way to resolve this is to simply put in a bridge yourself. So if I click on this massive edge here and hold shift and click on this massive edge here, I'm gonna use my bridge tool to bridge them up so that there isn't a loop of gap here to fill up. So after selecting these two opposite edges in edge mode, I'll go to Medit Mesh, Bridge, and now they're bridged up. Now I can double click on any exposed edge like this twice and it goes around and selects the entire shape. And then you can hit Mesh, Full Hole, and now it's, it's absolutely fine. So the trick there, if you've got enclosed loops like on the letter E, the letter P, or the letter R, you'll need to 
bridge up a piece of it so that there isn't a donut shape remaining. Now, if I hit three, it's still gonna have some problems. So I need to turn this face here into quads or triangles or both. So to do that, I'm gonna go to mesh and ideally I'd like to quadrangulate this. You cannot quadrangulate geometry as far as I'm aware until you first triangulated it. So let's go to triangulate and it will triangulate this mesh as best as it can. And now you can go to mesh quadrangulate and go to the options box for quadrangulate. In there, you need to make sure that all of these options are unticked. They seem to just make the whole tool not work and then hit quadrangulate and it will do the best it can to convert as many triangles as possible and join them together into squares. And it's done a pretty good job. Now, this letter E at the moment is suitable to be exported into a game engine. If I was to just separate my geometry like this and export this E into a games engine, they shouldn't kick up any errors because everything's either got triangles or four-sided shapes and when I hit three, it's smoothable and there's a few creases going on over here which we'll solve in the next bit but the edges of the geometry are still pretty sharp and not rounding off like comic sands and so this is now an okay piece of geometry it's not amazing but it's okay if you're looking to sell geometry or impress people then you would need to do some other work here so that we can bridge these in an even neater way. So you could probably stop watching the video now if that's all you want, but if you're looking to really make this a perfect piece of geometry that's professional, then keep watching. So if you're looking to sort of do this in the most expert possible way, we now need to remove all these faces and we're gonna bridge them together even better. These faces, they're not a full loop. If I try and double click through them, it won't let me select the whole loop, which is really annoying. So I've now got to go to my top view. I'm just gonna click on a face up randomly on my shape and hit F to focus, F to focus, and try and find the shape I'm just going to go to my side view here and if I very carefully drag select the front of my faces and even more carefully hold shift and drag a super narrow line along that bevel, it should mean that I've just very carefully selected only the front faces of my letter like this. You could, if you have difficulty dragging really tight boxes like that, you could just hold a tab on the keyboard and select all of these faces like this, it might take you a lot longer, but you could hold tab and that allows you to paint select faces. It's all fun and games until you get to really small faces down here, but you should probably better work it out. And now delete those front faces any way you can. I left a couple out here by mistake. So now we're ready to bridge this properly. So I'd go to edge mode and I'm first gonna start off on areas that I definitely know should be bridged. So I'm gonna click on this edge here. This should join up really nicely with this bottom edge here. I'm actually going to space bar to my front view to see this in the neatest possible way. I'm going to turn off my x-ray and turn on my lights. Okay, so I really want to bridge this edge here to this edge here and I can hit bridge. I'm going to make sure bridge is added to your shelf, which is control shift on your keyboard and then go to edit mesh and bridge. And that should then pop up on your shelf like mine is here. So to do this one by one would take absolute ages. So you can on the keyboard hit the letter G. The letter G is repeat command. So I'm going to shift and select these two opposite edges and hit G and this process is speeding up now. But it's still not that fast either. And an even better way of doing this is to go to your poly count. So go to display, heads up display and turn on poly count. I've added this to my shelf here as well by control shifting that on. And if you select a bunch of faces, let's say try and choose a number that you can easily double in your head. So I'm gonna go from one to five here. And at the top, I also wanna select five that are nearby. So I'm gonna do one, I happened to be correct then, and I can just hit bridge on these guys. I can't quite see it if I turn on my default material. So that was one to seven. I can do it up here, one to, oh, so two sevens are 14. So get that, get this number up to 14 if you know that the first number was seven, and bridge them up. So it's a much faster way of bridging. Now eventually you'll get down to an area like this and realize that you've run out of edges to bridge. So you've got a couple of options. You could use triangles, which are fine if you're in a pinch, but I like to actually decide if I really need all of these edge loops here. I can see up here the E is still looking quite smooth with its edges spaced apart like this. If I come down here, I could think, you know what, I'm gonna double click on these edges. Just to clarify, I wanna double click. It does select the side one here as well. And I'm gonna say, you know what, I actually don't need any of you at all. And I'm gonna do shift, right click, delete edge. I do lose a little bit of curvature on the E there, but it's no worse than the rest of them. And if I really wanted to, I could go to vertex mode and just carefully drag that down there. Or I could rotate it slightly if I want to be super accurate and that would be fine. I don't only have one triangle uh, to solve down here. To fill in a triangle, you cannot use the bridge tool. You have to use the fill hole tool or a pen to polygon tool. So I'll go to mesh full hole 
And I've got one triangle, but it's fine. I need to try and keep the number of triangles to an absolute minimum. So I'm gonna go around here, select these two, bridge them. You could probably fast forward through this video and skip it with your keyboard, but try to manually click on edges that you know definitely are opposite like these ones are definitely opposite they should totally be bridged together like this as opposed to on any faces over here that would also help keep the opposite sides equal and then i can go through here and bridge these so if i go from one to nine i know now that i'm looking for the number 18 so if i go from up here that's 15 16 17 18 bridge that that's all bridging nicely if you accidentally select an uneven number or more on one side than the other and hit bridge, it'll throw up an error message down here where it won't be happy. So you can probably fast forward through this now. So I've got 12 there. And bridge. And sometimes when you bevel geometry, it creates these nasty little triangle shapes in the corners, which you have to delete. I can also see down here that there is a problem with that overlapping. I'm going to untangle that geometry before it causes any more problems and with moving the vertices. And then I can bridge this one to this one. When you're bridging, make sure you leave a gap. So you cannot have this connecting one in the middle, connecting them both together. So make sure you leave that blank and then bridge these opposite ones together and bridge those together and then you're done. This letter E is now, in my opinion, professional and you could actually sell this geometry quite easily. And when people come to inspect your handiwork, it won't look all weird and janky. And also we have now lost that horrible stretched inflatable balloon look out on the corners here because we very carefully bridged our geometry together ourselves. Unfortunately, you'd have to do that to all of the letters, but it's just how it is as far as I'm aware. If you're aware of a better way of bridging geometry neatly like this or creating quads neatly like this, let me know. But as far as I know, as of 2019, we have to do things manually if you want it to be absolutely perfect. Before I close, there's this one final question that I get asked very often is, is this when people create text and duplicate it they cannot edit the duplicated text so if I go to create some text really quick and call this one test and if I duplicate this test text control D move it backwards the front one the original I still have a tab in my attribute editor called type one and I can change it to what I like and everything's fine but on the back one that it has not got a tab called type which is a huge problem so what you can do is click on the text that does have a tab called type one on it then go to edit duplicate special hit the options box and make sure you tick the box that says duplicate input graph and hit duplicate special and then move the duplicate out of the way you'll see that now it says type two and you can now change this uh, font you can change what you want you can change the text to something else in an interactive way. So duplicate special is quite useful and it's pretty much everything you'll need to know about how to use type without going into things like texturing or animation.